next up, I have the huge pleasure to introduce our next guest. She's one of the most inspirational motorcyclists and motorcycle travelers around. At 23 years old, she became the first woman to ride around the world, but waited four decades to tell her story. And then she wrote the book, Lone Rider. I mean, I'm joined, of course, by Els Elspeth Beard. Welcome, Elspeth. Hello, James. It's Hi. fantastic to have you here. And it's fantastic to have you at the festival. So I have to ask, how have you been enjoying it? It has been, it has been really, I, I honestly, it's just so nice to be back at an event like this and to see so many people out having a great time, everybody out on their motorbikes, people, it's just been amazing. It's been yeah. a really, really amazing weekend. And what have you been doing throughout the, the last two and a half days are we on now? <laughs> well, I've been busy. I've given uh, several presentations and talks. I've been uh, selling my book and just talking to people. It's just so nice to it's, talk we're to out, people. We're out, we're outside. Face to face, talking to people, it's been brilliant. That's it, and I know you're, you're um, uh, you, you probably hear it a lot, but you're, you're an inspiration to a lot of riders. I know um, one person who I know, actually, they cried when they said they, they knew that you were coming to the festival and they would get to hear, <laughs> hear you speak. I gen genuinely <laughs> was like that. Um, so, but I introduced you as, as the first uh, woman to ride around the world solo, but recently you find out that actually that might not mm. be the case. I know, I know. <laughs> no, it's amazing. This story um, about this other woman called Mary, and she, uh, and actually quite similar to me, where, where she rode uh, her motorbike uh, around the world uh, before I did. Um, and her story has been completely unknown about until uh, I think it was in April. Uh, it was somebody in Australia found some article, some newspaper article that, that was written in a, uh, in a newspaper out there and managed to track her down and because she was married she changed her name and anyway. So finally they found her and, um, and I went down to meet her and we had a fantastic day. She's so she's really lovely. And was we that had in Paris? No, she's no? in Portsmouth. Oh, in Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Well, that's a little less, I know, so a little less exotic, <laughs> but Portsmouth's still a wonderful place and, to be. Uh, so we had so many common stories that, you know, in common. It was wonderful to meet her. So she rode a BSA Bantam, uh, uh, a 175. And there I was thinking I was, you know, good, you know, riding a nice comfortable BMW, <laughs> um, a BSA Bantam, and she, I think it was 67 to 76. So yeah. it was like seven years, but she did work in it. I mean, she did her trip in a slightly different way to I did. So, so she, I think, but don't, um, she kind of worked for six or eight months and she did a bit more, then yeah. she worked for a year somewhere else. So she really did work her way around the world. But I mean, an extraordinary story. Anyway, so she's writing her book, so really looking forward to really that. Forward to writing. And talking of books, I've, I've read your book, uh, Lone Rider. It's a, f a brilliant read. I'd recommend it to anyone out there. Uh, if you're into biking or not to be on their interest, if you're into travel, you'll enjoy it. And I know earlier in the day, you were down on the main stage giving a talk, you had a huge crowd there. Um, but what I found very interesting is you did your ride, I won't say the year because that's our competition question, <laughs> but you know, it was, it was a few decades ago, but it, it took you many, many years to tell the story of your book. And uh, why was that? Well, much the same as Mary, really, because when I got back from my trip in 1984, um, nobody was interested in my story. Nobody really wanted to know what I'd done. I, at the time, I contacted the, you know, the bike press, and, you, and just people just didn't weren't interested. No. And I think it was just a different time, a different era, really. Um, so, but it was fine because in those days you didn't, you know, you. I mean, for me. I wanted an adventure and I wanted to see the world and it was not about being the first or the, the youngest or the you know whatever it just wasn't about that you, we, I just wanted to travel and and see the world and have an adventure and the fact that people weren't interested when I got back it, it was it was a bit <laughs> hurtful well it was more that my friends and family didn't want to know and um, it was a bit hurtful but then you know so your, your friends and family weren't interested either, uh, publishers as well. No, no, absolutely nobody was interested. <laughs> so, uh, but it was fine. And actually it's quite good because now 35 years later, it's, it's all kind of come back. And, and now I have a whole, you know, my life now has completely changed. So, so my story, you know, or my journey that I did 35 years ago changed 
me completely then. And then it kind of lay dormant for, you know, 35 years. And now it's all come back and, and I do these amazing events and I get, and I get invited, I come to come here, you know. <laughs> so it's been brilliant. So it's almost and like having kind of a, a, a lost manuscript in the attic. Yeah, it's actually it's in your like mind. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. So and, and it's really good. So, and what does it feel like to be, you know, you come to the ABR Festival, it, it's, a, it's a, a huge event, it's absolutely fantastic. And, and you've been an architect for the past however many years and suddenly you're, you're a superstar to these people. <laughs> what, does it, what does it feel like when you're on stage there? Oh, it's, it's, I think it's just, I cannot, I still can't grasp how what I did seems to mean so much to people. Yeah. You know, it's kind of really, I still don't get it. And it's so nice when people come up to me and say, you know, you inspired me to, to go off on a trip or, or you inspired me to get back on my bike again or it was because of you I, I went around the world. And yeah. I think, well, it's fantastic. You know, it's a real honor. That's it, and and I guess being or being known as the the, the first female rider to ride, ride solo around the world. I, I I hate saying this because I think you're an inspiration to, to everybody, including myself, to be honest with you, Al Smith. Oh, but I know in particular, um, a, a lot of women are inspired to even get into my motorcycling because of you. Is does that make you feel good? It makes me feel great, and you know, I I you know what I really wanted my book to do was to show people, especially women, that actually you can do anything. Yeah. You know, you, 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 it's all in the mind, you know, and you just have to get out and go and do it. And, and it's, it's not that difficult. You just have to be determined to, um, you, know, uh, you know, to see it through. And you just have to keep going and you'll get there and you'll do, and you can, women can do anything. <laughs> we can do anything. So, um, talking, you know, that mindset. Can I take you back those, however many decades, to to when you were thinking about taking off? You were 23 years old. It wasn't something that was really done by by men or women. I know Ted Simon had gone around the world and written Jupiter's Travels, but it was by no means a, a mainstream uh, occupation. But you know, and so, so, what were you thinking back then when you thought, hell, I'm just going to ride around the world? I didn't, you know, to be honest, I was, I, I mean, the reason I went was because I was broken hearted. I had a lousy degree. I was thinking, <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do now. I know what I'll do. I'll go and ride my bike around the world. So yeah. it was, I was sort of was in a slightly, I wasn't in a good place. It's the easy option. It and must it's be. the easy option. <laughs> and I wanted, I wanted to escape as well yeah. as wanting adventure and wanting to see the world. But I didn't think of it as I'm gonna ride all around the world. I just thought I'll just do America and then I'll get to the end of America and then I'll get to New Zealand and then I'll just see if I get to Australia. And I just did it bit by bit. And I think that's really important to, you know, to break the trip down in, into little sections and little segments and not think of it as a whole round the world trip. Yeah. You know, just, just do it in bite sized pieces and then you just kind of, you slowly eat away at it and then suddenly <laughs> you find your home and you've done it. Easy. And it's a much easier way to do it than to get this whole big thing um, and it wasn't really until I part until I crossed the border from Iran into Turkey and then so I'd gone all the way because I, I went across America Australia and then through the Far East and then through India Pakistan Iran Turkey so it wasn't really until I I crossed the border into Turkey and I actually dared to think to myself I might actually do this. Yeah. I might actually. <laughs> I might actually make it home. Oh wow! So that was because I'd got through Iran, and then all, all I then had to do was Turkey, and then Europe, and I was home. Yeah. So I had the kind of easy bit to do. <laughs> so. <laughs> There's a lot of people here looking, you know, they're inspired by you, but they're looking for advice from you. Is, is that kind of the key piece of advice that you give to people when they ask you questions up on stage, piece by piece? Or? Yes, I, piece by piece. I also say one of the hardest things is actually leaving. Yeah. You know, once you leave you, you'll be, and you're on the road, you'll, you'll be amazed how easy it is. It really is. It's the hardest thing is, is actually taking yourself out of your comfort zone and taking that step and getting on your bike and going. And once you've done that, it's easy. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. Because you will always think of, you know, five different reasons or excuses why it's not the right time to go. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and you just, it's ju you've just got to go and do it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and stop making up reasons and excuses. <laughs> and so you, you went around the globe. I know you, you spent, spent some time in Australia and, and various other countries, kind of, you didn't, it wasn't kind of one quick hit, but you said earlier that you were, you were escaping a broken heart and, uh, and a degree you weren't particularly proud of. <laughs> Shall I phrase it that way? Um, when you came back, did you find it solved those problems? No. Well, I fell in love when I was on my on my round the world trip, so that kind of solved that problem. <laughs> solved the broken, it mended um, the heart. It mended the heart. <laughs> yes, it mended the heart. Um, it, it made it difficult in some ways. It made it much harder to settle down. Uh, I didn't. I went back and finished off my architecture training, but that was really hard work. I really had to make myself do it because I kind of just everything seemed so boring. You know, I'd had this incredible time on, on the road where every I'd lived every day. You know, every minute of every day was intense, and it was really just trying to survive yeah. and do this and do that. And you're constantly, and you, it's, it's, you know, you really feel alive. And to to go from that to just kind of coming home, and it's just, bleh. and it was really difficult. And so I really had to push myself a lot to to get myself through the architect. You know, my my um, final two years of architecture. And then I got a job, and that was kind of hard work. <laughs> yeah, I really had to on. push myself through that. And then it was really finding the water tower in, in 1988. So that's um, where you live now, isn't it? That's where I live now. And then that was the sort of thing that gave me, that, that was my next challenge, mm. my next project. So I had something to focus on. I had something I could completely absorb myself into. You know, my trip was gone, it was forgotten, it was in a box, in a cupboard, you know, it was that yeah. I was, I was, you know, this was the water tower, I was going to make this into my home. And that was a seven year project. I mean, it was a huge, <laughs> huge project. Um, and during that time, I, I had my son was born, um, I had a lot of personal problems, my father, anyway, it was yeah. a, it was difficult times, um, but good and bad. Good and bad. Um, so yeah, so then I had another project and then I started up my own architectural practice. So that was the next stage of my life. And, and, then, and then I'm here. And then so. you're here, you wrote a best-selling book <laughs> yeah. and, and, yeah. and are here at the ABR Festival with yeah. us. Uh, Elspeth, I, I could sit here all evening hearing about your adventures. It really is a genuine pleasure to have you in the studio. Um, I'm afraid we have to cut it off now, um, but hopefully I'll see you later on tonight. It'd Absolutely. be great to catch up a little bit more. Um, Elspeth, thanks so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank Please you very do. much. If you enjoyed that interview and would like to meet Elspeth Beard, then it's an absolute pleasure to announce that she'll be at the Adventure Bike Ride Festival 2022, held at the magnificent Ragley Hall Estate in Warwickshire on the 24th to the 26th of June. The ABR Festival is a weekend long celebration of adventure motorcycling. Now, if you like bikes and hearing stories like Elspeth's, then chances are you're going to love the ABR Festival. So come and join us. Head on over to www.abrfestival.com and get your tickets today.